welcome to Creative Block, where your hosts V and Ian. We interview people in creative industries about their life, work, and hobbies while we doodle jam. We asked people on our socials if they had specific topics they wanted us to discuss, as well as some drawing prompts. Today, we have with us my good friend and amazing artist, Miguel Puka. What up? What's up, buddy? Hey, what's up, Ian? Hey, V. Thank you for hey. having me. I'm huge fans of yours, and I've worked with both of you, and it's a pleasure to, to be on the show and, and talk about what blocks my creatives <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're definitely gonna get into that i'm so excited that you you were able to come on the show because i know you were like really busy with work so i'm so glad that you were able to make it you're you've done so many things you've done so many things in your career because you've been a board artist you've been a director and a showrunner and that is so cool i'm, I'm curious as to well i'm curious to, I, want, I always like to go back to the beginning to the very start oh. My origin. Yeah, and like, were you a doodler as a kid, or, or did it come I was, later? Uh, yeah. Were you always like, time. yeah, go ahead. Yes, I was a big time doodler, and I would draw on everything and anything I could get my hands on. Mm-hmm. So, uh, my dad was a butcher at Farmer John, and, you know, growing up with ADD, and just so much attention and energy that my dad figured out how to calm me down, and he would bring, like, this giant butcher paper and I could roll oh like almost like six feet tall right and it could roll out into like hundreds of feet and I would sit lay on the ground and just draw and draw and draw every day oh, and that's awesome. I was like my I, I just love drawing and it kept me out of trouble mm. it kept me calmed and I was able to focus in and just like oh okay cool I could was there something bad. about like the act of drawing that just like felt good like the sort of like movement of the pen or did you have like because i know look we've, we've gotten into it i know you like comics bro oh, <laughs> yeah. did you, or did you have like a an influence that you know like i know like for me like i was uh was saturday morning cartoons and comics and i wanted to emulate that i'm just curious if that was uh, yeah it was comics for sure i i loved anything to do with comics. I love reading comics. I wasn't good at reading books, but I, I just loved everything like comics. Like one of the first comics I ever bought was a Street Fighter comic. And it was just because I was trying to impress my, my brother. Because I was like, nice. <laughs> I didn't want him to think I was lame. And so I got a Street Fighter comic. And I was like, see, I'm cool. And I used to love watching him uh, just play games. On mm. a, a Nintendo, so I I would read comics, he'll play games, and I'll just watch him play, and uh, it was always a blast just watching my older brother, and just I, I always try to impress him. So whenever I find I, I could find out that he loved, I would draw. So it was a lot of Mario's, a lot of Power Rangers, mm. uh, a lot of Street Fighters. His favorite character was Vega. Nice. Mm-hmm. It was always fun to kind of just kind of do stuff for for the family and that's one thing i always loved is like i would doodle and then i'll give them to people yeah and then yeah yeah I draw like little sheets of paper and just give them when even when i was a kid to the point where some my, finally my one of my uncles or cousins told me like you should sell these oh yeah like, yeah <laughs> really sell these drawings that's cool no there's something really cool about you you kind of get like when you're because like i remember like doodling as a kid maybe v, you can relate to this too like if if you can draw it's like a magic power and everybody's mm. like whoa you can can you do this can you draw this so yeah like you know what's funny i feel like for me when i was drawing as a kid it was kind of like a way to um connect with my group of friends because it was just kind of like i mean i was kind of like i didn't know what an oc was at the time but for me it was just kind of <laughs> like a way to role play kind of so i never really gave my drawings to people so that's why it's kind of funny that you were like just drawing and giving your drawings away, Miguel. Yeah, I used to sell them for like I. It was funny. I didn't know how to make copies, so in middle school, I would. I was. I love Kevin and Hobbes. Oh and yeah. I, I, I made a little comic book based off of a Kevin and Hobbes comic, and and it was. I called them Lightning Miggy. <laughs> and nice. it, I just I, I drew the whole comic. 
based off of a Kevin and Hobbs one. And I didn't know how to copy or use a copy machine. So I drew it like 15 times. No <laughs> way. Yeah. Man, you're so bad. But <gasps> oh my God. I didn't I didn't care for money. I just I was like, hey, people want to buy my comics. So I was selling it for 25 cents. And I was like, I was thinking about it, I was like, shit. <laughs> Well, I'm not That's making like, much of a... <laughs> like less than a penny, like a, an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh That's my God. Awesome. You do it for the love. You do it for the I'm love. Still, I'm still dumb like that, but... Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I remember uh, when I was a kid, if I like liked something, like to trace it, I would take a sheet of paper and the, put it on the TV and the static of the TV oh, yeah. would stick it. And then I would trace over. What Dude, was I tried on... to do that when I was a kid. I was like, when I was like, probably like around ten. I watched uh, Cowboy Bebop for the first time, and I really liked the character Ed. And I wanted to draw that character, and I put the sheet of paper on the TV, and I couldn't see anything through the paper. I couldn't trace it. I was so mad. So <laughs> well, I, I did that too because we used to. Uh, <laughs> we were stealing cable. Nice. And so like every second, like it would freeze, and it would just kind of, it would be ghosted on my screen for like maybe three seconds. So I learned how to draw Scooby Doo and all these different characters. I was like, oh my god, here! I, <laughs> and it was pretty awesome because it got me to learn how to draw pretty quick. Oh, that's crazy! That's awesome. Did you have? Did you... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to jump ahead in time because I was wondering if you um. If you went to art school or like what that was like. Yeah, I did. I, I went to the Art Institute in Los Angeles. They're no longer a school anymore for a good reason. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> uh, well, they they were pumping out so many artists with that. And I think uh, they were promising the world and they just couldn't find them work. And mm. fortunately, they're just like shoving VFX and 3D animation or three anything with, to do with cg down our throats when a lot of us went into school and wanting to learn 2d animation or anything to do with 2d and they're like no you can't do that and this is you know during the time where 2d was dead and it was all about cg so they were really forcing a lot of us to like do you have to take this if not you're done mm -hmm. <laughs> I, uh you won't be able to get work yeah i feel i feel like that's like that's like a, like a fear response. People are just like, oh well, you know, two. No one cares about two D. I remember, I remember getting dissuaded to 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 not go into animation because we're like, animation's dead. Two D animation's dead. And I'm like, yeah, but I think if you just are passionate and you like something enough and you're willing to like try, like mm -hmm. you'll make it happen. I don't know. Maybe I'm yeah. being a little naive, but. No, and that's one thing I, I, I learned. I was like, I'm not going to give up on this dream. Mm -hmm. But I didn't because I've been drawing. I've been doing working in 2D. Yeah. Was... yeah. So when you graduated, did you uh, immediately get a, into animation a gig or did, you, did it take a, some time? I was lucky enough and fortunate enough to know people that graduated before I even graduated. So even when I was a senior in college, Actually, I had my first internship at Six Point Harness. Mm. Oh, really? Um, so they were, I think, a brand new. They they have already been established a bit. They've done some. They've done some uh, other some straight to DVD stuff. I think one of them that they're ashamed of was Chico and Wapple. <laughs> uh, was a show. It was terrible. <laughs> I remember this. Hold on. It almost looks like uh, like Adult Swim, like one of the first Adult Swim cartoons. So it's, oh yeah, it's yeah, yeah, all yeah, done yeah. in like After Effects. <laughs> yeah, symbol. That's God. Look at you guys. Some nice drawings here. <laughs> well, you, you're the one. Who, you're the being interviewed, so I have time to draw. I just, yeah, exactly. I just, I just say a question, and you're like, "Wait, I have to delve deep." <laughs> so that's cool. So you, so you had a friend that in school that uh gave you an internship at six point uh no the a friend of mine his name's daniel stone he told me about this internship and he was like the top student at our school he was an amazing artist amazing draftsman he could do everything animation backgrounds and everyone looked up to that guy and and he's like hey you want a internship i was like yeah well first he told me it was a job 
And I was like, all right, cool. So I took mm-hmm. it and like they hired, they interviewed me, they hired me and they're only paying me like 300 bucks as like a testing ground. And mm. I, I, I didn't care. I would have done it for free. Um, <laughs> and I met some, uh, I met Todd Omen who sat next to me and V, you know, Todd, Todd was a, he's a character designer. Yeah. On that house. So yeah, I met yeah. him back in 2006. No uh, way. That's so crazy. That's I was so just cool. Like, kid and i was like all right i drove them every i drove everyone to lunch <laughs> during that time and while well, i was still going to school and then they gave me internship credit after because they're like oh well sorry it was only like a three-month gig and it was great because i had such a blast i had no idea what i was doing but mm-hmm. they trusted me they gave me a bunch of duties to work on like storyboards uh animation on flash and it was it was a lot of work for like a student mm-hmm. but i'm you know i'm at nick right now and i'm seeing what the the interns are getting right now mm-hmm. and i was like are the artist program kids like they're giving they're giving them like actual work and i'm like that's so cool mm-hmm. and oh, i was awesome. so afraid i was like i have no idea what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> did you think that that's where you found, kind of found your love of storyboarding or or did you yeah. i I've always loved storyboarding, even when I was in college. Um, mm. As soon as I learned about storyboarding, I didn't want to give it up. But I also wanted to become a character designer. Wow. And then because of school, I got really good at animating in CG. And I I was like in this crossroad of like, what do I do? Where, where do I have to move? But every job I got offered or every job that I got that I got to work on was storyboarding. And I just, it was fun because I got to do everything in there. I got to anime, I got to to make some characters, do some backgrounds, do some props, um, figure stuff out, you know, cause sometimes like when you're working animation, you probably, they probably don't have a character design done yet. And it's up to you, the board artist to create it, even with incidentals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Where, kind of wear these different hats as you're as you're storyboarding right yeah it's cool it's all it's also like the closest thing to like comics i feel like for i feel like the three of us were kind of all really into comics and i feel like storyboards is kind of like the closest medium uh in animation at least to uh making comics um yeah that's really cool but both of you i just got to say are masters at drawing like (laughs) because ah, I, I see what i see everything you guys do and i'm just like wow <laughs> i wish i wish i had like the energy and dedication to like sit down and animate stuff <laughs> or draw because i'm sometimes i'm just like i like i don't know how you guys do it but i appreciate it and i always look forward to all of your drawings Oh, thanks, man. Keep okay. so, see, see, yeah, but you directed a movie, yeah, and are yeah. a showrunner. That's why <laughs> I'm over here doodling on Instagram, and you're. I'm like, oh, I'm a. I directed that movie. That's why yeah, we get yeah, Miguel yeah. on the show. It's just so he can tell us how good we are. <laughs> yeah. but I say that now, and then I'm gonna be asking you guys, like, hey, uh, can I be a revisionist on your movie? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's funny that you mentioned that because we've kind of talked about that like briefly on a couple other episodes, but have you ever in your career kind of gone up and down positions? Oh, that's and a you, great question. And can you yeah, like talk true. about that a little bit? Like Yeah. Um I actually I've been when I started off as a storyboard artist mm-hmm. and then I would jump around because like when you work for smaller studios, like you kind of do dip, you wear different hats. So jumping around from being a prop designer to a character designer mm. to animating in Flash to, you know, I even, I did two years of freelance for Warner Brothers doing revisions. Mm. But at the same time, I was working as a storyboard artist. So I, I would take, because I, I don't know how some people do it, but I can't storyboard full time and then freelance storyboard at the same time because I, I have a one track mind. Mm. So it was calming for me to do revisions because i was quicker to like not think that much or just like okay i just got to fix some mouth shapes and stuff and knock it out of the park or clean them 
like a mm. lot of the stuff i did a lot of cleanup for uh the looney tunes show at warner brothers and i got to work with spike brant who is an amazing animator um showrunner over at warner brothers and i learned so much from that guy so it, it was amazing just getting notes from him and i still have some of his original drawings because he would just draw like bugs bunny like no other and it looks yeah. just like you know chuck Dude. jones and the Looney Tunes are so hard to draw. Like, I, I love watching the old school Looney Tunes, but, like, I, I worked on one Looney Tunes property, and I was just like, God damn it. I hate drawing these characters. They're so, so hard to draw. <laughs> they are so <laughs> tough, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I'm, you know, I, I, would, I wouldn't mind going back to doing revisions here and there, just because, like, sometimes I feel you need a break. Yeah. But, I haven't done revisions since then, but I, I wouldn't mind doing it like just to help out people, just to like, all right, you need some, some punching up or, um, actually that's what I'm doing right now. I'm punching up some animatics. Oh, cool. In development, so there's always stuff. I, I it's mostly revisions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, you mentioned. Uh, let us know if that's okay for us to say on the pod. But uh, you mentioned that you have an uh, an overall with uh Nick, and could you explain a little bit what that means? Because I hear people kind of say that word every now and then, like they have an overall with the studio. But it, it's kind of like, like a little bit of a um, like a nebulous word. Like, what does it mean? <laughs> yeah, no. It, so what it means is I have a show in development. And I'm working on my show, but also an overall means like I get to help out other shows in different levels of development. So different, like maybe you have someone that just, that's pretty, just pitch the show, their own show. And, mm -hmm. and I'm helping them build their Bible or mm -hmm. there's times where like I'm storyboarding a, a pilot for them, or I'm doing revisions on a pilot or I'm punching up stuff or I'm helping out with character designs or I'm, I'm working with the writer to help, you know, mm -hmm. make a book series into a, a kind of animation series. Mm -hmm. And I, on top of everything else, like I'm just working on, I'm focusing on my project. So, mm -hmm. um, How so you that's been a lot of fun. It's, you know, but it's, it's development. It takes such a long time uh, as I don't know if you guys pitched before. I'm sure you have. I know for sure Ian has. Mm -hmm. uh, it does take a long time to. Yeah. Hey, to ground. I got my own ideas about that, but uh -oh, maybe that's for an, maybe that's for oh, another podcast. Oh, I think we start interviewing Ian now. Well, what do you? Think? <laughs> well, don't get could, me started. We... We could get in the meat of development. I think it's kind of interesting to to talk about it always. Yeah. But before we like go into it, I wanted to ask you, uh, Miguel, like how it feels to kind of be in that spot where you're always kind of jumping around projects. Do you like it? Is it hard to switch gears or is it kind of like, especially after being on the movie for so long, I guess, is it kind of more fun or do you kind of miss the, the kind of I, one? I, I think I work better and like little spurts mm. so like if you give me a like you know like a whole script to board in like seven weeks you know i, I want to say this thing v is a machine we we would get seven weeks to storyboard on the loud house she would get it done in two freaking weeks no you're, you're, you're <laughs> no. i didn't and, do it in two weeks i did I know. it in three i, know. I did it in three okay yeah, okay I, three weeks <laughs> i did it in three weeks because i was <laughs> Here's the thing, everybody who's listening. I came from, I I came from the French animation industry where you have to do your storyboards. When I left France, you had to do the eleven minute in three weeks, and it, like bef it, it 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 used to be four weeks for an eleven, but then they kind of started being like, actually now it's three weeks. And the way it is in France is that it's all unit based, which means that you only get paid for the three weeks. It's like, oh, here's a, here's the envelope. This is the amount of money you get. And, and if you go over the time, like if you spend four weeks instead of three, well, you still get the same amount of money. So for me, I was like, mm -hmm. so, so basically technically oh, no you, you're getting paid less because if, if you take more time, like they, they, yeah. they usually won't 
be too they'll be a little bit mad at you but not like crazy mad at you because they're like well we're not paying you more money so <laughs> you know right uh but I was so scared that Loud House was gonna be my last my first and last American gig that I was like I gotta stay on the French schedule just in case I have to go back to No you you <laughs> it was great to see your work ethic because like I there you know I, I drew a lot of line map mileage when it came to storyboard but that, that was just my way to kinda I kinda was taught to do it because uh when I was working on Futurama it was very much layout and storyboarding. Mm -hmm. But we had to draw every single little thing. And I learned so much from from people that, you know, came from working at Disney and or The Simpsons. So mm -hmm. it was their way of doing it. And that helped me out to figure out like, all right, oh, okay. And this is something that a lot of people don't think about is like, that's right. I got to think about who's going to touch these drawings. Like, that's right. An animator yeah. should touch. If you don't give that information, they're going to go wild and not give you what you want. So it's good to kind of go in there and really punch up, plus up, Yeah, you know, pose out, whatever you need. But I, you know, little by little, I started kind of breaking out of like, I should draw like V someday. <laughs> and he, He's awesome. Ian draws, Ian draws the same, like his, his, like both of you have a really good, good shorthand. And I could only get this shorthand on like maybe eight hours before I have to pitch. <laughs> it's always like, <laughs> always like a desperation. <laughs> like, like, I gotta finish it. Yeah. But your your boards, I remember seeing I your boards while, and I was like, God damn it! Like they're really clean. You're it, they're kind of like almost like a comic book, and and your your layouts are very strong. And I remember like when I was I was looking at everybody's boards at the beginning because I was I wanted to make sure I was in the style of the show. And there's a lot of like compositions and layout that I saw you do. And I was like, oh, I never thought of this before. I never thought of like layering. I remember you had like a character that's like, in, that was like in the middle of the screen, like kind of like a flat shot. And then all of the hands came in as an overlay and like pointing at the character. And I was like, oh, damn, this is so smart. This is like such a good way to stage this. And it's so easy and clean and like e e economic for animation mm -hmm. like stuff like that i remember like looking at your boards and i was like man that's smart <laughs> yeah yeah man. I, yeah i remember on the movie seeing your stuff and being like Ooh, all right i gotta i gotta <laughs> i gotta up my game you and goose <laughs> gustavo oh, yeah. i was gustavo like was i mean everybody gustavo on that was project was heavy hitters but... we were so lucky to have everyone and, and fortunate enough and by the way i don't know if we mentioned this ian worked on the Casa Grande movie and he did um, uh amazing oh it's already out it's already oh, yeah out. yeah according it's to already this, out. yeah it came out and everybody loved it that's awesome. it's, it's been on the 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 number one yeah. block on netflix for, for three more weeks, sequels though? i mean just <laughs> yeah for for people if you don't listening if you don't know why we're laughing it's because we recorded this uh two months prior <laughs> a <laughs> week before the the movie comes out yeah. we... oh by the way here this is you can you can cut this out if you want but are, i'm just gonna ask are you gonna dress up for the premiere i'm gonna go semi-casual Okay, because I was thinking about coming out in, in like a suit. And yeah, being, like, I, I mean, being, I, going my crazy. wife was making fun of us. I was like, when you guys dress up, you don't even dress up, dress up. You guys ah, just go ah. like a hat or something. I was like, well, <laughs> this time I, I want to do something special. And plus, Cristo Fernandez, who does the voice of Chipiri, is going to be there. So I want to have him sign my, my uh, Ted Lasso jersey. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, uh, so cool. Danny Rojas football is life so. oh my god he's the best he's the best character he's yeah. so funny he oh. was so funny on the records like it's <gasps> that guy's awesome is it uh, getting like a sorry sorry a, a... I, that was a little here we can come back to the podcast I no yeah asking. like getting a movie <laughs> like i mean i guess like a tv star like this is, is it kind of hard or is it like are they usually like excited like how, what has your experience been getting talent like that on the movie yeah, well, it, what's crazy is everyone almost every time we reached out to someone on the series, we we got them, and we were so fortunate to like have them like, yeah, we're done, we're do it, we're gonna do it. 
um, obviously we went to like a lot of Latino actors and they're like, I'm down. I never get approached by this stuff. So when we we reached out to a lot of the actors for the movie, I had like, you know, we had like our top five. And, you know, what's funny is about, about Chipiri, the, the, you know, Bungwari's dad, mm -hmm. is I always had Cristo Fernandez in my head. Mm -hmm. So one thing that we do and we did on the Casa Grande is to, in order to get them like excited, like, hey, we want to, we want you to play this character. We'll kind of draw the character to resemble them. <laughs> <laughs> smart, smart. And it works almost every time. <laughs> and I love it. It works uh, 60% of the time, every time. <laughs> 60% uh, of the time every time I love it this is so and, funny and we did that with Cristo and he he said yes and we're we were so pumped and you know we're like all right we're now you know those we're we were happy because we were already cleaning up his bottle yeah, and so yeah. We were but yeah it was great um so yeah the drawings Oh yeah. Uh, Should we do the next page? Oh, yeah, next page. Yeah, I have like I started uh, on the oh, next cool. page. Yeah. Um. So, so so for the movie, did was that something you pitched to uh, Nickelodeon, or did they already have something in development and you kind of came aboard? Like, how did that come about? They they had discussed when we were ending. Um, we found out that the series was ending. Mm. so they were like we but we still want to do it we want to do a movie because loud house got a movie and it was right, right during the pandemic and it was a hit so they're like we want to do a casa grande movie mm -hmm. and we're like all right who's gonna write it who's gonna do this so they hired they got lalo alcaraz who who became the writer mm -hmm. and he reached out to me i was like they want me to do this movie um i wasn't even signed on to to do it yet like what should we do yeah. uh goes sh should we do it in mexico i was like yes you have to go to mexico mm. and they have to go to michoacan because that's where my family's from mm. and i want to like honor them going to michoacan because that's what i used to do every summer uh mm. when i was nice. growing up my parents would take me in a bus and like all right see ya we'll show up in three days all stinky smelling like <laughs> 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 I, I just wanted to, like, I, I just fell in love with Michoacan and I always wanted to do something like that. So I did one of the, the one of my first drawings I ever did, or because they were going to present it to Netflix, was a Mexican flag, but it's, instead of the eagle, it was Sergio, mm -hmm. which we tried to use on the movie, but we we needed to cut time, so we took it out. But, it you know, I still have it and I still want to use it somewhere, but I that was one of the first things I did and and then so we kind of got to like writing and it was a little too similar to the loud house movie mm -hmm. uh, so but i still wasn't signed on to it and then i, I want to say this because i want to say a huge thank you to darlene camaño who was working at a uh, uh, at Nick during the time part of the movie and with, with Ramsey Nato so she they called me on the Zoom and I, I hope I'm going I'm to mention this when um, I'm talking about it they called me on the Zoom and Ramsey asked me Miguel do you want to direct the movie and Darlene was nodding yes but not <laughs> saying yes just like direct the movie or do you want to co-direct the movie? And she was like, no. <laughs> so I was just like, uh, uh, and I was like, I want to direct the movie. And they're like, yes, that's what we wanted to hear. All right. <laughs> that is and, so funny. Oh but my gosh. I, was, they, I, I want to give it up to both of them because they believed in me and, and they, mm. they nurtured me. And even though I was, I was afraid to do it because I've never, I, I think I worked on like, the, I did. I worked on the Loud House movie yeah. just for a second, mm -hmm. but I think what you know what I pitched, they really liked. And in the Loud House movie, I had they gave me the section to like clean up and then pitch some ideas for Bobby, Bobby Casagrande, Santiago Casagrande to get to um, 
Scotland. So mm. I picked this whole other, like, it could be like a minute mini film mm. of just him traveling all over the world, um, getting closer and closer, but then being, ending up on a boat and then heading back to the U.S. So he's still trying to get closer and closer, riding on bikes, on motorcycles, on a car, on different animals. All the animals <laughs> are joining him. And <laughs> what was great about that is that I, you know, I got to play and have fun and they're like, oh, that's so great, but we can't use it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, the studio kind of saw what I did and they're like, hey, that, that's per- that was pretty fun. So it'd be nice to do like something like a tra- another travel movie. So when I signed on, you know, I, I, re- I, I got to work on the script and help out. We went through a few writers and then with it took almost a year to kind of figure it figure it out because we we were still wrapping on the Casa Grande series. Mm-hmm. So, so you're like pulling double duty. Yeah. Wow. So it, it was I was I, I was working on my development project too at the same time. So I was wow. juggling things. Oh uh, wow. So you've been developing for a while on that other project. Yeah, I pitched yeah, it yeah, in yeah. 2021. Wow. And yeah. Huh? I, in my head, I was like, wow, I could do both, you know? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Because Kyle Kyle Marshall is doing, he was doing both at the same time. Like he was. Kyle is also a beast. Yeah. He directed a, another movie that's going to come out this summer. And he was doing, he was able to do it. I was like, that's so cool. But um, they, the studio was like, man, no, you can't do both. It's stressful. It's your first movie. We want you to focus on one thing. So what we're going to do is put that uh, development project on hold. And you're gonna focus on the movie, and I was, I was upset. I was like, I want to do both. I could do both, but yeah. I'm so happy I didn't do both because I I got to experience like some awesome people. I got to work with like Ian, and and you know I got to work with Darren McGowan, who became oh uh, yeah, who's my head of story, and Darren I got to awesome. work with some amazing people, some amazing feature people, amazing like tv people and we all wanted to step up because this was our first movie mm-hmm. and we did and we kind of we we kept you know we, we kept showing up and every screening we had it was just an amazing time even to from the de- development stage like miguel gonzalez the art director cowie zucchini the associate art director mm-hmm. they brought the fire they they elevated this movie to where it's at and I wish we could get a art of book of just a movie. Oh my god, that'd be so you know, cool! Even even our visual development, we had so many amazing. Oh yeah, the stuff that Justin did. Yeah, Justin Noel did some amazing, amazing ukumus. Which you know, by we, this time you'll you'll understand you'll who ukumu is. <laughs> <laughs> there was no way we could get we could animate th- this character because he was just massive, full of lava and fire and magma and it was just all over crazy stuff but that, yeah we we had a lot of talented people mm-hmm. join our team and you know I, i'm so happy and i thank them in my head every day oh that's so cool <laughs> Which, i don't know if i have answered your question but yeah no. anyways i helped i got to work with two writers tony and becky and we we sat with them for i want to say two months every day just trying to work on this story and it went from like different angles of the story to the point where like you know it was where it's at right now and i'm 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 so happy and grateful for them because they really did an amazing job and they wrote the 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 rise Tur- teenage mutant ninja turtle rise movie oh nice nice and, oh. and they show ran i think uh the santiago of the seas but oh nice they were they were amazing to work with and they probably hated me because i was like no we need to get this done oh and the reason why i sat i i I was on zoom every day with them not just because like you know i'm not an asshole or anything but i just we needed (laughs) to get this movie done because the movie was supposed to start in november of 2021 but because the script was ready and it wasn't their fault they were brand new they came in to kind of punch it up but then we wrote it we we came up with a new story and we didn't start until may of 2022 and we thought like they were just gonna add on that time that we missed but no they was like well you lost that time so you just have to crunch and get it done Ooh. in a shorter amount of time 
Oh and my I think God. we pulled it out. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I remember, um, you know, it was, yeah. I mean, I, I had a blast on Casa. Yeah. It was, it was a great time. But yeah, I remember we were, we were cr- getting it done. I wouldn't say we're crunching. I never felt like, I don't know, I, I attribute this to you as a good director that I never felt like we were, you know, like there's no time. It always felt like we find the time and it was always worth it. So it was just great. Do you feel yeah. like you have the, um, the feature de- bug now? Like you want to keep doing more movies or would you? Dude, have- I, I would love to do more movies. And, you know, I know it's like, this is my first movie. And mm-hmm. even if I, I, I'm not at the level to work on other feature at a different studio. Cause I know they're, <laughs> oh. yeah, they're all people, but I, I would love to do another movie for yeah. sure. Well, and- you're definitely at the level. You got, it. you got it. You got it. Wait till you see the finish movie. Oh, you already saw it. What do you think? <laughs> Everyone loves it. Don't you know? Have you read all the articles that have come out? <laughs> what would you? How would you describe your directing style and philosophy? Like, what? How do you go about directing? I would say, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ian, because you were, you, you, you were there. I like to consider myself an inclusive director where I want to get everyone from the team. Doesn't matter if you're the ex- you're in production or an uh, executive assistant. I want to hear your thoughts because mm-hmm. animation is collaboration, and mm-hmm. why it's good to hear from people because even when I was like, you always hear that thing where like, oh, don't speak up. If you're not at the table, you can't speak up. Mm-hmm. And you know, on Loud House, I was always itching to like pitch ideas during like um board pitch meetings and i i just i just felt like i never had that place until i find like you know what i don't care i'm just gonna speak up and i did and they actually listened they liked my ideas like oh okay cool because i would like think about it after pitches i was like man that episode would be funny if we did this mm. or if we punch this up and i'll go and i'll you know i'll tell the, the, the director like hey what if you did this for this episode like, mm. yeah, that's a good idea mm. and I, I never it's because like i you know i trusted them and they mm-hmm. they were cool with me so they're all right but that's what i wanted to do on the movie i wanted to kind of include everyone because we're so attached to this movie that it'd be it's like they all take ownership of it and it was a great opportunity because ian you were there when after one of our screenings we're like we got straight to work and like all right what do you think? What, how do we make this better? How, how do we punch this up? Yep. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, no, no. It was great. Yeah. I mean, I love that. You know, it makes everybody, I think, uh, put their best work forward when they feel a sense of ownership. And you're, mm-hmm. you know, you were, you know, you were like, everyone here is a brain. You're not just like an, a, another hand of mine. You know, oh. you're like, I, you were, you know, I, I, and that's how I, I direct as well, you know, I'm like, I want to hear what excites, like, like, here's why I'm excited for you to board this scene, but I also want to know, like, what is, it, you know, what excites you about this script, you know, because then, like, when you have that energy, and you're like, oh, I got, I want to do this and this and this, and it's like, oh, I can't wait to see it, you know, when you have that passion, mm-hmm. as opposed to just being like, here you go, get it done, you know. And you know, I don't know if, there, if if one way is better. You know, I mean, I don't know what you think, but I don't know if there's like. I mean, that's how I prefer to do it. But you know, maybe some people like that direction, that being like very direct, <laughs> and being like, "I need this, this, and this," and they're like, "Thank you, okay," and I just go for it. Yeah, all kinds of different people. I'm not trying to talk shit. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I am. I don't know, but you know. uh oh. <laughs> oh, you need it sometimes, and sometimes you just kind of. I mean, uh, I like you sometimes... have to be direct with some some it's artists because like, that's the only yeah. way they, they understand. And other times, like, just do whatever you want. Like, just I trust you. You could do it, and yeah. that's why I had like a, like I think I had, you know, working on this movie was definitely like the best experience of my career. And I enjoyed every single day I worked on it. Even like on the stressful days, it was good. It was rewarding because I got to do it with people that were, you know, I consider, you know, friends now. Yeah. And, um, 
and I got to give it up to Darren McGowan because he had my back. He, I trusted him. Love Darren. Like I was able to like, all right, I'm being pulled to like 25 meetings. Darren, I trust you with the board artist. And he, I think he wrangled everyone. Yeah. He, he told me, he would tell me like, dude, this guy, Ian, you should give him this sequence just to shut him up for, for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Let him go for it. Yeah, I always have ideas. That's my problem. <laughs> no. But he didn't came in. He like he came in clutch because we would give him like, dude, big monster fight. You want to do it? And he's like, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, Darren yeah. is awesome. He also came from. Uh... So, was it rough draft? Did you yeah. guys meet back in on Futurama? I met him at on Futurama. Yeah, he was my assistant director on one like two episodes. Oh, so you were directing on Futurama as well? No, no. I, I met, I was a storyboard artist. He okay. was an assistant director. Uh, I like see. For the director. Yeah, no way. Uh, actually, I have a funny story about Futurama, uh, Rush Draft. They offered me, I, I, that's when I got a job to work on Fairly Odd Parents right after the end of season 10 of Futurama. Oh, yeah. After I told them, I was like, oh, I got a job offer, so I'm going to take it. They offered me a uh, assistant director job. Really? <laughs> yeah, like, we had plans for you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that it's like a sitcom laugh. It's so funny. <laughs> so, so what was your first gig at Nickelodeon? Because you've been at Nickelodeon a long time. Like this is like, you're kind of a staple. Yeah, twelve years. So I worked on Fairly Odd Parents. So that was your first one. Okay. Uh, uh, the Poochie season. Oh, I mean the Sparky season introduced mm. a dog and then they never introduced him again after, <laughs> after that so we call it the poochie, <laughs> the poochie. The and then i were i did a stunt on breadwinners for about four months oh, yeah that show was Red. fun that was a really fun show but yeah, it, it looked was, really hard I th- it I, was hard for me because it was a quick turnaround to get these boards done it was in flash too uh, right it was, it was quick and but at the same time i was doing full-time freelance on a lot of the butch hartman pilots and i just it was hard and i just i just had a baby Mm. and it was tough because i was i wasn't sleeping i was boarding (laughs) full-time and boarding freelance full-time and i i needed something easier so they moved me i got to move on to shimmer and shine uh series which uh was the worst experience of my career oh really <laughs> I, I i wasn't the right vibe and yeah no, they didn't i don't match. think anyone that was boarding on it on season one was the right vibe because mm-hmm. they needed to punch it up to make it funny but then we made it too funny where some of the people that worked on it didn't like it and <laughs> it gave us a hard time and it, it just wasn't a fun fun show to work on so i Luckily, what came after, I think I lasted like seven months on it. And they offered me a job for a new show at Nick. And I, I you know, I had other job offers. Yeah. But I was like, I, I don't want to leave Nick. I like Nick. Mm. So that job was the Loud House. And mm. I ended up being one of the first artists, board artists that they hired. And I think I was there for like maybe three weeks before anyone came on. So I was just sitting around. I was like, all right, what do I do? So I started kind of drawing and figuring out stuff. And I got to meet everyone and kind of figure out like how a show gets started. So it was pretty fun. I got to see the first rendition of Ronnie Ann, who was a redhead. And I remember telling the creator, like, all right, Lincoln has like three redhead friends. Why is this (laughs) a redhead too? Why can't she be a Latina? and you know that's so cool that it came from you oh my gosh yeah. that is so cool i didn't know it like ronnie Ann got figured out that early on in the show because she didn't yeah. appear until like episode like maybe six or something like six yeah. or seven that is that's so right. cool wow she was, she was in my very first episode heavy metal but we never got to see her we yeah exactly the show was um, pretty good in season one where like there was like a lot of like a mystery quote unquote yeah, where parents- it was just yeah i got to reveal them in the christmas special that is so cool yeah super awesome to do Mm -hmm. um and 
yeah and ever since i've been at um the loud house and then i jumped over to casa grandes but funny thing about casa grandes it we it was on season two when we did relative chaos and there was rumors about like hey we're gonna do a spinoff but nothing really happened so disney came knocking i was like hey uh you want to direct a pilot over over at the mouse and i was like yeah i was like i'll love to work over there so i jumped over and it was it was a pretty cool pilot yeah yeah uh, they it was very much like casa grandes oh and, you know it i was like oh okay yeah okay but casa grandes did this so let's do this instead and they're like no 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 we want this instead <laughs> can you and do it like, more oh, like <laughs> crap. All right. but it was a great experience because i got to see like the the first stages of development and just kind of pitching and retooling stuff working with some amazing artists like bobby yeah. pontillas and a lot of people that it, it what's great is what, what was amazing about it almost everyone i worked with on that pilot i ended up hiring to work on casa Grandes. <laughs> oh, nice. so, oh, nice. the show or the movie or both the show oh nice so it was it was pretty fun because it was like it was like my testing ground. I'm like, oh, you're a cool person. I'll hire you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was pretty fun because I got to do I got to work with some awesome people. Thank you, Disney. Thank you yeah, for yeah, your. <laughs> yeah, when, and that's, that's a good, amazing. Good lesson because it's like when this thing, you know, falls through or doesn't kind of like. You know, it's like, oh, well, just that led to this other th- like opportunity. Like, it was like, oh, yeah. well, I met, you know, I don't know. It's it's pretty cool. It's kind of like when Yodorowsky tried to make Dune, but then it <laughs> yeah, failed. Yeah. But then all those guys went on to make Alien, you know. Mm. That's true. Like, pretty, it's like, that's true. And that's why, like, you know, I was like, man, Disney is so smart. And they reached out to the right person to work on it. Yeah. And- you know, we, we did like a full, almost a full animatic, Ooh. but then I was, that's when like, I was already hearing, like, I, I kind of, I, I spread the rumor at uh, Nick. I was like, Hey, <laughs> Disney has a Mexican American show going on over there. And what's going on at Nick with the Casa Grandes. I think, I think that helped. Yeah. Get the Casa up. I love I'm like, right. You're a little gossip. I know you're <laughs> always like that. <laughs> You're like, I don't know. I just heard something. I heard a rumor. I don't know what you heard. Because I remember on Loud House, sometimes you'd be like, ooh, I hear studio this or studio that, or like getting these kind of ratings. I'm like, how does he find out all this stuff? <laughs> yeah, I had a little here. fire under <laughs> But yeah, it's, it was an amazing time. And then I just got to do the movie, and it was great. It was such a fun time. Are do you so you know? You kind of talked about this earlier, but um, do you have any like? I know you're 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 a big comic guy. Do you have any interest in exploring that outside, or is it just there's just not enough time? I I always wanted to do comics, and I I try to dabble. I did some some comics, um, the Lot House. Yeah, I was yeah, gonna really, say. I think you. Yeah, yeah. You did a couple. How many issues did you do for Loud House? Like not not full issues. I think I did maybe four, four or five comic um, stories. Mm. But I really got to flex that muscle, and I loved it. It was a lot of fun to do because I got to do the the whole pencil mileage there, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, I got to you know they they actually liked what I was doing, and it was a lot of fun because I. One of my favorite ones was a muscle fish comic that I did. And that's the type of things I always wanted to do was like cool action. And, you know, comics have always been my love because my first love, because like I always loved Marvel comics. I collect comics now and it was great to do it. And I got to do it on the Loud House, but it was just, it was a lot, it was time, time consuming to the point where like, I didn't have that much storyboarding and doing comics is a lot of work. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. you know, BLA, <laughs> and you both do it, so it's always, it's always a blast to see your work. Like I mentioned before, but yeah, I I wish I had that time to work, like to sit down and like, all right, draw. Kind of like yeah, I know you just kind of wish like 
there's like 38 hours in the day. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I feel like there's, yeah. Also, Ian and I, we we don't have kids, so I feel like that also frees up a bunch of time. Yeah, Yeah. you gotta be like a good father. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna what play video games no, I'm just <laughs> i know right we get to be like little shits all the time you gotta, yeah you have to you know, set an example I, just, yeah, well, I mean i don't I like know to, oh go ahead sorry man. no i like to doodle every now and then but you know it's uh, like i carry a sketchbook in my car nice but it, it's not like i'm like oh i'm gonna post it yeah it, it just i'm always like i'm all, i always have that imposter syndrome like oh, i suck no <laughs> we all that's have crazy it. We that's all crazy that it. you it's crazy that you still have it because i feel I know, like you're so good. i don't know you have like so much experience like you've been on like so like success. you've been on yeah on futurama <laughs> which is a huge draw, show like, yeah. 300 drawings and i just draw one <laughs> yeah but you're that. talking we're making you talk so uh <laughs> no because and you've, you've you've only worked on like hit shows like all the shows you worked on are hits so it's like it, it, it's 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 almost like it's all thanks to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No way. You're it's the secret things. sauce. All three of us. <laughs> you hear that animation industry? <laughs> Are you? I know you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> should should we talk about the titular question? Oh, creative block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do so. Do you experience creative block? And if you do, what does it feel like for you? And how do you? deal with it yeah so i do i i i create i i do hit that block every now and then especially staring at a blank page when you have to storyboard Mm -hmm. it's what helps me is like get up walk away and then i like to kind of zone out and focus sometimes that happens like at 10 o'clock at night and i just like i gotta jot stuff down Mm -hmm. but if i if i watch it like i throw it up I need to always listen to something while I draw, mm-hmm. or like a movie that I've seen, like uh, the best movie in the world, Willow. Oh, in the background. oh, that's your movie. That's your go-to yeah. movie. <laughs> that, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Uh, that one, or or uh, Die Hard with the Vengeance. <laughs> and nice. I'll just sit. I'll just sit and draw, and then I'll start thumbing. Mm. Thumbing always gets me going because then that gets me to the next square so what i like to do on my storyboard panel i do little squares and then i'll just start thumbing right there i'll thumb and thumb and thumb and thumb yeah. and that that kind of helps me get get it out of the way even when it's coming to a character design like i'll do the same thing like i'll just do little doodles here and there but it's hard to get out of that funk sometimes oh I, yeah you know especially coming out of the the pandemic you're just stewing in your chair like i need something to help me out yeah but it's it, that's why like for for you two it's so easy to see you guys like just sit down and draw it's because you guys do it all the time and with me i don't do it all the time and it's that's so true what you're talking about i noticed that it happens to me too it's kind of like uh like a inertia it's like yeah. if you stop it's kind of like i imagine it like a boulder and if you're like you got the boulder going really? and then it's yeah. like it's rolling no problem at the moment you stop like getting it started again ooh, that's like it's so yeah it, it's so hard but but you know that it doesn't i don't know for me that's kind of what i tell myself now i'm like okay it's not gonna take that long to get the inertia going again so i i know it's gonna be hard only for like a week or two and then it's just gonna be easy peasy but like it's that helps me going because i'm like okay so it's only one or two weeks where it's a pain in the ass yeah um but it's so true yeah what you're saying is so true and and also like I'm a big time procrastinator. That's why I like <laughs> if I work better in, in bursts. So yeah. if you give me something and like it's two in two days, I'll get it done. Mm-hmm. Um, if you give me something to get done in like seven weeks, like oh, like I said, I'll you'll wait it. till the last two days. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's like the best work I could do. You know, three weeks of work in like two days, and I'm just like, oh, which yeah. it's, it's a terrible habit, and it's not healthy at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's like you know you, you kind of have to make these lists to help you and this is something i learned from kyle marshall he'll make lists of what he needs to get done in that day mm-hmm. and if he doesn't like he just has to work even harder the next day so it's like all right i gotta get all these scenes done all these sequences done and um 
it's Dude, super yeah. helpful and, it's, and it never worked for me <laughs> it's so helpful I feel like I literally like have so many little sketchbooks where actually now my quote-unquote sketchbooks are like mostly just like to-do lists and I feel like even if I don't get through the full to-do list even if I do 80% of it it would still be more than if I didn't do the list at all mm. like you know what I mean like I feel like I just kind of and I I I really got in the habit of doing that when I read that book what was it called no I didn't even read the book I just like watched the like inspirational video to like promote <laughs> the book that was like I think it's called like the 5 a.m club or something or like the whole spiel is like you go to wake up at 5 a.m. And then the first hour of your day is just, it's your hour where you do whatever you want. And this is the best way to split your hour in productive tasks. So the first 20 minutes, you like uh, yeah. exercise. And then the next 20 minutes, you like read or watch something inspirational, like a TED talk. And then, the, and then the last 20 minutes, you like are supposed to do like your to-do list and like plan your day. I I, I don't wake up at 5 a.m. anymore, but um, I, I tried it. I was like, yeah, hey, this is pretty good. It's pretty good advice. That's, That's cool. That's awesome. <laughs> no, it's I, yeah, I try to, yeah, I, I, I definitely relate to that inertia. Like, I feel like if I stop drawing, for a decent amount of time i'll start to suck really bad so i have to like it's almost like a muscle it's like training it keeping you know that visual vocabulary but yeah that's awesome yeah i try to draw or doodle every day but when i get down to it like it does like it's like that block you gotta get over that hump mm -hmm. or that wall mm -hmm. but i also I like it. oh sorry yeah 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 <laughs> 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 but i also like that you said to that to you know you walk away from it and i've been thinking about that a lot recently that you know because you just put your head space in a different and sometimes you know that ant that thing that was like blocking you whoosh, releases yeah. and you just like walk oh away there it me. is got it and then you know you do like 20 drawings and it's like you're almost like pumping yourself up like when you're walking away because you're like, all right, I know what I got to do. I got to do this. I know routine. All right, yeah. cool. I'm going to start this shot and then go up. Boom. All right. I try to rush back to my office and boom. Just <laughs> mm -hmm, <laughs> it's always that. And it's cool that Nick has swings so you get to kind of swing back. Yeah. And forth. <laughs> <laughs> it's Is there anything that you want to plug or like talk about before we wrap up the episode? Yeah, I want to plug the Casa Grande movie. Woo! And if you haven't watched it, watch, watch it again because we had so much fun doing and we added so many Easter eggs in there from like the series or just like stuff we wanted to add in there. And hopefully by the time I get to talk about this uh, or this comes out, maybe I shouldn't say that, but I have another project. I have two projects in development and hopefully they're out by then and I'm able to talk about it. I drew two of them on here. And hopefully when you see them, you'll get to see them. And it's like, I know what Miguel was working on. Wow, that is so cool. You heard it first on Creative Block, folks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is awesome, man. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you for having me. Huge fans of V and Ian and Creative Block. Thank you. And I can't wait to keep listening to, to all of you and hopefully work together soon. And maybe you'll hire me as your executive assistant. <laughs> oh that would be a dream oh my god I mean, yeah you'd so be much. my executive assistant no <laughs> dude i would love to work, work together again i had a blast so. okay. yeah, yeah i i hope we ever get we if we get the chance like we get to do another one and just kind of make some magic with all three of us oh heck yeah oh, that dude. would be that's a dream that would be a dream dream team come on yeah, let's get it together you want yeah. this <laughs> you want this create this creative energy <laughs> that would be great all right thank all you right, so dude. much and i appreciate everything and and everyone working on this thank you again for editing all my stuttering and please make me sound like beyonce <laughs> <laughs> shall do that <laughs> we'll put a voice yeah uh, filter out. and that's the end of this creative vlog miguel thanks for being our guest and sharing your story and thanks to our listeners. Follow us on social media at CRTV Block, where we ask for drawing prompts and questions for our guests. Huge thanks to our editor, Clements, for editing the podcast. Marco, for helping us produce the show. And Abuka, for creating the short clips we've been putting out.
If you love our show, you can support us on Patreon. Becoming a patron gets you early access to interviews and access to a Discord community. Uh, you can also support us by liking, subscribing, commenting, all of this fun stuff. It helps uh, like the algorithm play in our favor and get more people to listen. And the more people who listen, uh, the more ad revenue we get. So it's oh, a free yeah. way for you to give us more money. Um, click the link in the description of this episode to follow Miguel on all social medias and to access our Patreon. I've been your host, V. And I've been your guest host, Ian. Keep being creative, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. I love you. Bye.